348 comments on the last video. Are you guys f***ing crazy? Seriously? Thank you guys. Well, it took me two and a half hours in the last two days to read through all the comments and I have replied to most of them so far. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> really great comments, good suggestions again, and I always love reading them all. Well, I want to discuss some of your comments, though, and this is what this video here is about. And I also want to talk a little bit about the project we have ahead of us, either paralleling battery cells like in the good old days or building two strings separately and then parallel them later on. In the last video we have discussed the pros and cons of both methods and we came up with the idea that building a separate battery is actually better. It has more benefits in terms of redundancy safety it's easier to build and monitor and i quickly want to go over some really basics We've got each battery bank now connected with a positive negative to the circuit breaker. If we flip the circuit breaker, we can turn off one battery string. The circuit breaker on the other side is connected to a bus bar, positive and negative. On the negative side, we have our smart shunt, which measures the energy going into all of the battery banks or coming out of all the battery banks. This is our common and only shunt we have. What we cannot forget is our BMS. And I think the QUCC BMSs are really well designed for exactly this purpose, because they are using a reliable they are now using a reliable relay to switch off the power to or from the battery and the bms always should come first if the bms turns off it shuts down the whole battery bank or i can do it manually flicking the breaker and the whole battery bank shuts down and then i have read so many comments where people said well, Andy, you need to pay attention that you don't connect an empty, an empty battery bank with a fully charged battery bank because there will be current flowing from this battery bank to the other battery bank. Absolutely true. But how often do you think I will have one of the battery banks disconnected from the system? Is it once a day? Once a week? A month? A year? Well, guys, probably never. I will never disconnect one of these battery banks ever unless there is something wrong with it or I need to maintain it or test it or something. But this could be 10 years away. I will never take off any of these battery banks and run the other one individually on this system. So this is not a concern at all. And I've done some tests now with these lithium phosphate batteries here. I had one on 80% and one on 30% and I paralleled them and measured the current in between the cells. What do you think happened? Of course, there is a current, a balanced current flowing from the higher charge cell to the lower charge cell. But the voltage difference was so small that I could measure less than 50 amps and this only for a couple of seconds and then it dropped down to 20 and 10 amps. And after an hour, it was only a few amps flowing from one battery to the other battery. This of course only happens if we are in the flat area of the curve. So if I connect two cells at 3.3 volts, one could be 30, the other one could be 80% charged. 
There will be no big currents flowing. And the same is with battery banks. If you connect them and they have roughly the same voltage, forget about it. If it's 50, 60 amps, there's nothing. If you charge both banks up at the same time and one has already 80%, at some stage the voltage of this bank will rise a bit faster than this one. And we will have current flowing from this battery bank over the bus bar into this battery bank and the charging current coming in from the solar system will mainly go into the battery bank with a lower voltage. So you're charging the empty battery bank more than the one with already higher state of charge. And over time this will balance out. I'm not expecting to have any problems with this at all. Of course the initial connection should not be one bank is fully charged and the other one is fully empty. If we have several volts different, there, there could be a massive currents flowing from one bank to the other. You need to make sure the voltages at least are the same. But the state of charge is not too of a concern at this point of time because the, the banks will balance over time. And to my question, if we should parallel the cells or if we should parallel the battery banks later on, Aaron Aaron said, here is the answer. Go to this link, orionbms.com slash sitemap. 11 up from the bottom is using parallel strings. Read and you will be surprised like I was. Done. Well, guys, I linked this document below he's referring to. I had a good read over this 17 or 18 pages of this section, parallel strings. And the guys from Orion BMS do not recommend paralleling battery banks at all unless there is a real need for redundancy and if you cannot turn off your load so the battery always needs to be connected for ups or health systems something like this they always they always recommend to parallel the cells individually and then build the whole battery out of these paralleled cells well some of the arguments they bring are based on the fact that none of the cells are the same. And you always will have different behaviors of these two battery strings. Even they are made of the same cells, this is all matched, internal resistance, voltage, capacity, whatever. Building battery banks out of them makes them still different. And when you charge your battery bank through your bus bar here, the current will not split up 50-50. There will always be differences. One bank charges faster than the other one. And they even claim you won't get the full capacity out of these parallel battery banks because of these differences with individual cells. You know, internal resistance is different, chemical differences between the cells. And there always will be currents going from one bank to the other bank and then back again when you discharge them and you have these micro cycles of these batteries and the shunt is not even counting them. So the shunt doesn't know if these battery banks are actually balancing themselves. And Orion BMS also talks about a cascading shutdown possibility. If you have a certain load on your inverter and the bus bars here and one BMS shuts off or your circuit breaker shuts off so your load will come only from the remaining battery bank and will overload either your BMS or your circuit breakers as well. And then you lose power altogether. And an uneven load situation, especially at the beginning when we connect both strings together. And I found other documents online as well where people say, well, if the batteries are balancing, for example, and there's no current coming from the solar charge controller, like in a floating situation, for example, and one battery string is balancing its cells. So the voltage actually goes a little bit down on this cell. What will happen is this battery string will feed energy into the lower voltage string, right? So it actually counters the efforts of the BMS to balance the cells in this battery bank. So yeah, I, I read through this document from Orion BMS and it created some kind of doubt in me if this is actually 
the best solution or if this is the correct solution, if this is the correct way to to parallel our battery banks instead of paralleling cells. But thinking about all these arguments they bring, so I don't really think all of them are valid. They're making their point and we will probably see charges and discharges between the banks, micro cycles. So I was a bit in doubt if this is really the best solution or if I just should parallel the batteries and run the show with one BMS and do it the classic way. But then I read this comment here from Jason, who is actually running 1P14S battery systems. And he is running 34 of them in parallel. So 34 battery strings, 14 cells each in parallel. And I read this several times and Yes, he is using 34 BMSs. So he really bought 34 Delhi BMSs. He, so he said they are the low spec ones, probably the ones without Bluetooth. So the really basic stuff. But potentially this is all you need, you know. They just need to monitor each cell. And if one goes out of balance, high voltage or really low voltage, they disconnect there. The BMS disconnects your whole battery bank then but just this one string. And then he has got another 33 still running and supplying power to his application. And his last sentence in his comment made really my day when he said, no regrets so far and beats the pants off of huge monolithic systems. So thank you very much, Jason, for sharing this positive feedback there. And quite a few other viewers have left comments as well where they have built batteries out of parallel strings of cells already and had no issues with this whatsoever. So, and because of all this feedback you gave me about these battery strings, I have now made the executive decision. We will go ahead and build a second battery and then we will parallel these banks together as I have shown here, BMS, circuit breaker, bus bars, smart shunt, connection to the inverter and solar charge controllers. But what could potentially happen, right? Well, we are talking about a huge, huge energy storage here. If something goes bonkers, well, guys, at least it makes good videos then, right? <laughs> so I think I'm ready to be that adventurous and build another 1P16S battery, 48 volt, around 15 kilowatt hours, and then we parallel it to the existing one and see what happens. Guys, thank you so much again for 348 comments on my last video. <laughs> that is really an amazing feedback. And it really shows the commitment of everyone in terms of building these batteries here. So thank you so much for sharing all your experience so far. And I'm really so glad I started this channel here seven months ago and I'm getting all this help and, and feedback and assistance from everyone worldwide now. It is amazing. All right, guys, I think we have talked enough about the theoretical side of building a new battery here and parallel it. It is time to put this all in action now over the next couple of weeks or so. And then we will see how this all works out. Well, guys, thank you again so much for all your support here, all your help, all your comments, all your suggestions, all your subscriptions. What a terrible word. And as always, stay charged and safe. And we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon. I'm so pumped. I'm so keen to start building this battery now here. I think we need to order some more parts for that. Well, I guess there will be still some more videos coming on this channel here, right? Okay, guys, thanks for watching again. See you then. Bye bye. I had one comment here under this video where someone said the BMS cable should be actually above the bus bar. That's absolutely right.